Hi, everyone. Thank you, Mia, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is Chen Chen Yi. You can call me Q, and my pronoun is Zai Shi. Hi, thank you so much for having us. I'm Xia Wei, um, and they, them pronouns. Um, and Q and I are super excited to be here today. Um, typically, we present this as a workshop uh, that's hour long, so we've condensed it into 30 minutes for all of you. Uh, I will start to share my screen, and Shawa will share the link to our slide uh, with all of you as well. Uh, because this uh, talk usually is more participatory, uh, so can you all see my screen okay? Sorry, it's still loading. Uh, so our talk slash workshop today is called Algorithmic Censorship Resistant Toolkit. Xiaowei and I are a uh, collective called The Future of Memory. And we'll talk more about uh, this big project and the toolkit later. Usually we start our talk by doing this warm-up exercise is to invite all the participants to use a Scribble tool in Google Slides to draw a word represents community. Uh, and on the top left, you can see the inspiration. So the Chinese word for person is, uh, looks like this. And the Chinese word for follow is pretty much two uh, double of the previous word. And if you stack them together, uh, stack three of them together, it means crowd. So because for this talk slash workshop, we'll do a lot of um, word creating slash word building. So we would love to encourage you all to participate for, um, for a few minutes. And uh, the place where you can access to the Scribble tool is right here. So if you uh, scroll down, then you can create things like this. So um, any questions so far about this part? And we just want to um, like show that as like a um, quick, community warm-up exercise. Uh, previously, we have seen people creating the, oh, looks great, yeah. Um, uh, we, previously, we've seen the people participating in this talk draw, you know, the idea of community uh, with, for example, a lot of people, like uh, the people word, or for example, someone drawing the circle, that looks great. Um, in later, uh, we'll talk about our agenda, like the majority of our talk today is actually about uh, using a, a tool that we made in this resistant toolkit to uh, create new Chinese characters that will bypass algorithmic censorship. Since so we're a little bit ahead of our schedule, so I think we can actually spend some time on this exercise here. Yeah, I've seen like people creating very wonderful creation, uh, like human in a circle like that, or human plus human. <laughs> like, um, yeah, my favorite um, is always the clever use of emojis too. That's like another <laughs> layer of abstraction. Just fun to see. Yeah, thank you for participating. Uh, I think maybe we can do it for another one minute. Uh, so make sure that we will um, have enough time for the rest of our exercise. Okay, thank you so much. Maybe we can come back to this slides later as well. Like if some of you are interested in keep doing it, but now we're gonna keep uh, move forward with our community agreement uh, because this talk slash workshop is very participatory. So we want to make sure we are offering a safe 
space for all of you. And some of the topic we will mention today is very politically sensitive. So we just want to make sure, you know, we'll communicate uh, and um, consent to the work we are uh, sharing today and be mindful of yourself and others. And please feel free to share feedback in the chat or I don't know if, I, if any attendees can unmute yourself, but please feel free to let us know if you uh, have any questions or any concerns about the topics we're um, talking about today. So we just want to have this part covered before we start to talk about our agenda. So we have 35 minutes for our talk slash workshop. So the plan is we will do a very quick 20 minutes each presentation on why we need to create a new language to bypass algorithmic censorship. And we will have 10 minutes hands-on workshop to create new hands uh, with, uh, using the tool that we uh, built for the, uh, in the toolkit. And the last five minutes will be review all the new words that we collectively made together. So that's our brief agenda. Uh, a very quick introduction about who we are. Um, Shao, please feel free to jump in on this part. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Q and I have worked together in a number of different capacities, um, and you know, through a series of many conversations, just thinking about one how a lot of language that's used online both is subject to automated censorship um, and content moderation and all these things, but also it's collected and used as forms of training data for further uh, machine learning models. And so we thought we were really fascinated by how language was had all these capacities online. So we were also inspired by existing practices of um, online uh, netizens, as they call them, uh, online users in China who were coming up with kind of very creative ways of bypassing the censorship that was ha that's happening in China. Um, we saw this as in the context of art as a way of doing maybe visual poetry. Um, yeah, so uh, these tools are really inspired by existing practices and kind of trying to push and think about how new vocabularies can also form new worlds. Yeah, so in this workshop, uh, slash talk, we ask ourselves what words will be left with to uh, will be left with to describe the past. What word will build our future? What is a new vocabulary we need to different kind of revolution? Uh, so, uh, and a lot of times when we talk about censorship, we have a particular uh, notion of certain countries and um, you know certain region. But for this workshop, I think we would love to you know open up the idea of, you know, uh, country-based like um, censorship and stuff. Because a lot of, uh, even though we are using a Chinese character maker, but I think the questions we discussed today is applied everywhere. And so in the end of this workshop, we all will create new words, which like Shaori mentioned, is kind of like a visual poetry that we'll create together. So before we start to do that, we'll have a very quick Hanzi 101 session. Um, so all Chinese characters are logograms. So they are developed on multiple principles. Today we'll focus on uh, pictogram and picto pictograph and ideograph. So pictograph, for example, that it's like a word that represents a physical object, and ideograph is a word that will, represents an abstract notion. And I will talk about some examples. So, for example, uh, in this pictogram, you can see the word sun. Uh, uh, from its original uh, Oracle Bone script that looks like a sun now looks like, you know, uh, and now that's the final word uh, for sun. And the word, uh, for example, wood is like this. And now it's developed from this way. So a uh, Chinese word sometimes uh, by creating the word itself is actually creating, drawing the word we see, drawing the word we, we feel. And the word ideograph represents abstract notion. For example, the Chinese word one, two, three is just one line, two line, three line. And the word, for example, uh, root is actually, you know, previously we have shown you the word wood that looks like this. And if you added a uh, line in the bottom, that means wood, uh, sorry, that means root. So 
this is really quick uh, Chinese word Chinese word 101. So later we are going to actually go through like uh, the tool that we uh, built based on those um, uh, principles in our toolkit. And uh, when you when we build uh, Chinese characters, uh, one of the building blocks that we we'll use is radicals. And I will show you later in our tool how the uh, radicals are uh, arranged. Um, so some previous incarnations of this work was actually thinking through um, so there's this short story in this compilation of Chinese sci-fi called Invisible Planets, and it describes a future in which people forget words. They like slowly have less and less vocabulary or disappearing both from the newspapers and also throughout um, much of culture. And so in early incarnations of the future of memory in our project, we were thinking through maybe there's ways of hiding banned terms on things like digital objects and distributing them on platforms like, you know, where digital objects are kind of currency. So like throughout games and things like that. So these are actually uh, one of them is in reference to uh, Xi Jinping, and it's about steamed buns. And the other one uh, is um, actually has to do with the Hong Kong protests, and these are hidden on the exterior exterior of these digital objects. Um, also, the mahjong tiles, which are ubiquitous and ways to just put banned terms um, on something like this. So references both culturally and also to contemporary uh, political situations. Um, and these are all, this is another strategy of um, thinking through automated censorship and ways to counter it. Um, and uh, we built a homonym tool. And so basically like the rice bunny um, in Chinese, it's uh, rice is me and the bunny is tu. So it's me too. Um, so that's kind of uh, referencing the um, me too movement, which was those terms were banned. Um, also the crab, um, wearing the watches. That's like an internet meme as well. And that's reference to uh, the three represents and the river crab is xie, so like social harmony and kind of making fun of that term. Um, and then the llamas um, are also a recurring internet meme. Um, but all of these are ways of using words that sound like each other to kind of uh, make fun and continue the conversation. Um, and so there's actually this really great paper that we were also um, influenced by in terms of our research, and we want to definitely highlight this work. Um, this, this practice of transcripting. Um, and so it's basically a co combining different radicals and creating new words um, as a form of protest. And so these folks document and um, the ways that these are used. Um, these characters are created in things like, you know, MS Paint or, you know, uh, graphics editing software. So it's a little, there's a little bit of a use barrier in trying to do this. Um, so for example, this one, which was referring to CY Liang, the um, former chief executive of Hong Kong um, in the first, uh, during the Umbrella Revolution. This is a new made up character, which means a uh, deadly person. So combining both the Chinese radical um, as well as Latin characters. Um, and this one uh, also the gender neutral third person uh, singular, uh, that's um, also a invented character by folks on the internet. Uh, yeah, so that was some uh, background research or previous um, work done by netizens. And for us, uh, we built this uh, big, uh, we built this collective that's called a future of memory, which is a provocation on algorithmic content mod moderation, power profit, and the ever shifting nature of language online. So, uh, shall we? Maybe you can share the link to our homepage to the chat. So uh, this entire experience, we have three ma uh, major components. The first is a future of memory game, 
uh, that you will play as like a, a content moderator and uh, through the uh, game, you will have to make ethical decisions on what you decide to censor. And then uh, there's this tool we create, uh, toolkit that we created that's called algorithmic censorship resistant toolkit. And one of the uh, ma major tool that we created for that toolkit is called Hands Maker. Uh, I will actually go through with them really quickly. Yeah, so for example, this is uh, the game, uh, but I think today we're probably not gonna have time to go through it, but we'll, uh, we'll really encourage you all to play it uh, after the talk. And this is a, a algorithmic censorship toolkit uh, with uh, multiple tools. I will go to the link to show you where it is later as well. And that's the a, a main tool that we built uh, that's to create new hands to bypass automated censorship. Okay, so let's uh, go to the site really quick. Um, Um, so the video actually is longer and with some other uh, censored uh, word that's being pronounced in the video, uh, but we're actually going to go through the, to the toolkit. Uh, so this is a toolkit and yeah, we collected a lot of uh, existing uh, tactics that's already available online. And uh, for example, like um, uh, text to emoji converter. And a lot of example we used here is a article that was censored uh, in Chinese social media uh, in the beginning of the pandemic uh, of a doctor's story. So at that time, the netizens came up with multiple ways to share the story without being censored. For example, they uh, convert their text to emoji, to hex converter, to moji bake, to um, uh, Martian language, things like that. So uh, we are still in the, this, this project is still ongoing. So we are trying to collect more of this sort of tactics online. And meanwhile, in this toolkit, we build these two tools uh, by ourselves. The first one is called Hands Maker, which will be the main one we'll uh, uh, share today. And then another one is called the Chinese Homophone Search. So we can actually go there really quick to talk about uh, this tool. So uh, like Xiao we mentioned, like the word rice bunny, uh, the pronunciation is me too, which presents the word me too, which is censored. And for example, this word uh, purple uh, square uh, is like uh, the pronunciation is ziyo, which sounds very similar to the word freedom. So for example, if we type the word ziyo, mean, which means freedom, and we can search, and uh, here are some, a list of homophones that sounds very similar to the word, but you know, the character itself is very different. So uh, for netizens, if they want to post something that might be censored, here are some options they can choose to bypass the censorship. Um, that, that, that's the homophone search tool. And uh, okay, and here is uh, our main tool for today, Hanzi Maker. So Hanzi, uh, 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 or Han words are the Chinese language system of writing. Um, and for this one, we uh, have a hands one one here. If some of you want to know more about uh, like the principles of building uh, Chinese word, for example, radicals are building blocks of Chinese character like tree, wood, forest. Um, and most of the radicals represent objects. Uh, radicals can be categorized by their meanings and radicals can appear in different positions as Chinese character. For example, this radical of, uh, that looks like square can appear on you know, different locations of this Chinese word. And you know, there are different configurations for uh, radicals as well. Like you can put them side by side or stack them vertically, or you know, there are multiple different ways to 
put together a word. And here are some examples of like a word that's actually created by netizens. Uh, so for now we have existing, you know, thousands of Chinese word, but it has been like this for a very long time. And we really want to challenge the idea of who gets to create new words. Uh, so by making this tool, it's kind of like a way for us to create a new word. Uh, meanwhile, uh, hoping that, you know, this word can go back past the censorship. Uh, for example, the last um, word uh, means Winnie the Pooh, because that word is heavily censored in China. So uh, we created this new uh, word that's kind of like a, basically a, we deconstructed the word when you shown in Chinese and then put them together as a new word. So people will be able to understand what it means, but the machine wouldn't. Uh, so that is some examples. So for this tool, on the left side, we have a Hanzi canvas. And on the right side, we have our radical list, which you can scroll through. And we ca categorize them with uh, some subtitle. Um, and if you keep scroll down, like you can see uh, left side, you will see some English definition. Like for example, later if I want to say, um, which words that I should create today. Uh, for example, if I want to create, um, let's see, power. Uh, yeah, so we have, I mean, let me, let me get rid of this first. So we have this power already here and then you can see the English definition is right here. And if we want to say power, uh, <laughs> any suggestions, shall we? Um, for example, let's just say black power. Um, so we can create words like this. Um, and of course you can add like other free type words too, like um, um, BLM and we can add that to canvas. Uh, so those are the ways that we can, you know, create a word that represents certain things. And then you can download this entire word that will be a JPEG uh, that you can save on your computer. And later you can share them on social media that, you know, that the message will be sent, but the machine wouldn't be able to tell what exactly is the message we, uh, we shared. And on the bottom right, uh, we have some, uh, a uh, very censored word in, in China, for example, uh, Tianmen or like, uh, you know, human rights. So those are the other, like if you are interested in creating uh, a new configuration for the censored word, you can click them and you can make, move them around. So here is a basic um, introduction of the Hanzi uh, maker tool. Okay, so yeah. Uh, and it, here are some like uh, previous, previously made um, um, like uh, some censored word and we created some like a 3D uh, iteration of them. For example, the word human rights, uh, you know, can be configured in, even in 3D way uh, for people to understand Chinese, they will be able to understand it, but machine wouldn't be able to tell what that is at all. Um, and Xiaowei, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, so I think in the next uh, few slides, we'll show some um, both Chinese and uh, non-Chinese speakers playing around with this tool. And it's really interesting. We mentioned earlier that it's kind of a form of visual poetry. And for this, um, this is like a character for uh, quarantine lockdown, and it has um, character small in the center. And then, you know, even if you don't know what the radicals mean, it's kind of like, these this idea of containment being represented through the character um, and like a person like in the center right um so yeah these are um characters from previous workshops and it's been really uh just exciting to see um how everyone is making sense of how the radicals look 
as well as their meaning. And a lot of the folks who um, are making these, um, uh, you know, they either don't speak Chinese um, or they're in the process of learning uh, Mandarin. And so, you know, for example, the Big Brother character, that's using all uh, radicals, um, but it's actually using them in a very illustrative way to something like the word deforestation, uh, deforestation, um, it's using the character for tree and then slice. So it's like there's a, a tree and then just stumps, tree stumps left around it. Um, so that's been uh, really fascinating. Other words like patriarchy, revolution, um, all these things are um, kind of combining these different concepts together. Um, so this was from one of the workshops. Uh, this second one um, was from a workshop in which uh, no one spoke um, Chinese. And so uh, the one, the congressman one is in reference to Mitch McConnell. So it's taking the turtle uh, radical, um, the radical uh, the for white and putting all those characters together. Um, and then the center one is trying to represent, uh, you know, censoring trending words. So using the axe, fly, the fly radical speech, uh, web, so web representing the internet um, and putting those together. And then the last one, uh, someone made this character for abolish ice. So using the radical for ice and then the fight, fight, fight. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really fascinating to just, um, yeah, be in conversation with folks through their uh, different characters um, and coming up with this new language where there's not really a pronunciation um, for the characters, uh, but it's, um, it's very much kind of an online language uh, or representation. Yeah, so for the rest of the 10 minutes, I uh, would love to invite you all to go to the Handsmaker link and create your own word that could be something uh, from, you know, the censored word uh, uh, we list on the bottom right. Um, sorry, right here. Or, you know, some other words you're interested in creating based on some of the radical list. So it's pretty much building a Lego with its Lego pieces. Um, so would love to do that exercise for around 10 minutes. And while you have some word that you already done, please, uh, if, if you're comfortable, please uh, feel free to place your new hands right here. And so we will do a uh, collectively uh, review them together in the end of this uh, session. And please feel free to ask us uh, any questions in the chat if you need any support. Uh, I'm gonna temporarily stop share um, I will share the uh, slides again later when we have people posting new words there. And in the meantime, if folks have any questions to um, or comments, uh, feel free. Yeah, and I'm going to play the music from our um, Future of Memory, uh, we have our <laughs> own Future of Memory music. So I'm gonna start to play that while we are working on this. Were you able to hear it? No, you might have to share sound. Um, we could hear it, I could hear it on the website though. Would you like to like us to try? It's okay. I can just share the video. Yes, I can hear it now.
Um, any questions so far? I while we are doing this, I'm trying to create some word that maybe represents this event as well. So just want to let you know I'm here together with you doing this. Oh, for sharing uh, your new Hanzi, you can um, download it. Uh, you can actually download or screenshot um, your new character, and then you can uh, place it into the last slide of the Google Docs. I'll drop in the link to the Google Doc again. And I think we can probably do it for another uh, three minutes. So we have enough time to review some of the creation. Um, can I use a slash to signify an opposite or antonym? Uh, you could try. I, I mean, I think all of it has meaning that you want it to have, right? Um, how do other people know the meaning of the new characters? Um, so it was really interesting when Q and I embarked on this research, we were like, how many Chinese radicals are there really? And it turns out that there's like 241 and there's kind of just this like visual dictionary that you can go through. Um, so uh, I, you know, our sense of it is like both, um, you can kind of like reverse look up the different radicals. Um, and it kind of like takes some deciphering, but you could use like the radical, the list of the radicals with their um, translations to decipher the new words. Um, or um, like some of the examples that we showed, you could use the radicals in a more kind of illustrative um, format to like form uh, image. I'm very close to create a woman as a KI word. Hopefully that will make sense.
Well, we've seen a lot of people creating wonderful words already. That's great. Um, uh, we'll, we can, uh, we'll organize those. Um, uh, so don't worry about like the layout of when you post your stuff, it's okay. Like we can organize them later. Um, so I've seen a lot of people have already creating wonderful words here. We're gonna, uh, I don't know if, if we can have participant talk over, uh, but I think from a lot of things you write down, we can re re read for you as well. So the word I created was kind of in a rush. So um, I, cause what I was trying to do is you can see like, uh, so this word means, uh, this word means AI and the left side is heart usually represents, you know, ethic feeling and right side that means woman. And this means net. So it's pretty much about, you know, um, what I was, my interpretation to this is more about uh, woman <laughs> AI ethic on the net. Um, that's kind of like representing of the event we're doing today. Um, cool. Shall we do wanna, uh, talk through some of those uh, examples we've seen so far. Yeah, I think um, someone had a really uh, great um, question too about uh, sensors and catching on. Um, it's definitely a cat and mouse game. Um, I suppose you could call it that or arms race. Um, but it's interesting too, um, we, as part of the research, Q and I, you know, um, started thinking about censorship and the different ways it's functioning. Um, we highly recommend this book uh, by Margaret Roberts, um, uh, where uh, it's thinking about how the ways that uh, censorship, it's kind of, it's sometimes random and uneven in order to create an atmosphere where, where people censor themselves first. There's also a lot of, so, so these characters, when you download them, um, their graphics, so their JPEGs, um, pings, and there's a lot of really interesting research uh, from Citizen Lab um, where they actually look specifically at image censorship um, and the different ways of like uh, dealing with images and flipping images to try and uh, fool, fool the algorithm. But yeah, I love all of these examples. Um, there's also uh, the Sanctuary City one uh, is like such a beautiful character on the slide 28. Um, thank you for that. I feel like you should use it. Um, use it everywhere. It, look, it looks like a really real word. <laughs> like you just feel so good together. Yeah, extremely yeah, right. beautiful right. and balanced, yeah. Yeah, and this one is very beautiful as well, like connecting these two strokes together in this part that represents freedom of speech. Um, and for example, this word talk about as a non-binary, uh, it's like, um, and then Mother Earth here is very nice as well. It's like uh, the one of the character here is mother and then another one is Earth. So combining together means Mother Earth. Yeah, like I think I saw a question in the Q&A about back up this work to a safe place. We will do that later. Uh, right now we're sharing this to all of you, uh, but later we'll definitely create a new backup that's um, to archive it. Yeah, okay. the um, code for this is also um, all on GitHub. Um, you'll have to excuse our, mm -hmm. our um, code, but uh, it's it's also nice so folks in China can access it via GitHub as well. Yeah, so if you're interested in contributing to this work, it's all open sourced. So please feel free to, you know, uh, <laughs> contribute on GitHub. Um, and we are going to keep developing this along the process as well. 